vorne sein. Two thousand years later. Right, so as you saw, I've just uh, had a meeting with a senior engineer who's on the same project as me. Plan of action for me today is to create two pipelines, one for storage accounts, and one for file services in Azure DevOps. I can show you file services and storage accounts. I assume they are going to be pretty similar. Um, although I think file services might use a different API version, um, the previous API version, but that's all stuff I'm going to have to uh, do my pre checks on before I start creating these. Um, yeah, it's, it's 1035, 1040 now. So, gonna gonna get some food first. So for breakfast we've got two meat-free sausages, two turkey rashers, bagel, four eggs and some dessert on the side, some low calorie strawberry jam, and on toast and a copper.
Right, so it's currently 1 p.m. I've managed to get one of the deployments done. So I've got one pipeline created and that was for storage accounts. Um, I'm running into some errors with file services and file shares. Um, but that's because they reference a the storage account module, but they have different parameters. So I may have to make quite a few changes to that separate module just to get it to work. Um, I might actually have to um, pass some parameters in the module rather than a separate parameters file or rather than referencing the parameters in the storage account. Um, so I'm probably going to have to have a, have a little think about how I go about this. I'll show you what I've currently done. So this is all like a, a draft. So I can show you this. I mean, it goes into a storage account. So obviously you can't have storage account. Just a random storage account that I've created. Um, all these you can just pass in the old parameters and variables. So nothing's like hard coded. Uh, apart from storage account name, which isn't going to be hard coded once this goes live or into the actual code base. Um, this is just for my own testing. Right. And the issue I'm having currently. So, what you'll find is when you're creating pipelines or doing any sort of work related to DevOps, whether that's infrastructure as code, CI, CD, whatever, um, it becomes sort of trial and error. Um, so as you can see, you know, first few didn't work at all and um, didn't pass any of the stages then started to get past the build stages. Um, and now the latest one, which ran the longest, two minutes, eight seconds. I'm not really sure why it failed. I'm assuming it's related to the private endpoint since so the storage account needs it. So the storage account module creates a private endpoint um, for that storage account. So I'm assuming the file services storage account is trying to use that same private endpoint, whereas it needs its own private endpoint. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a, a quick five minute break, grab some water and then think about, yeah, what I can do. Um, normally, normally I use that, that whiteboard to jot down some flow diagrams and they'll all design itself for this resource. So I'm gonna have a little experiment Um just jot things down, throw some stuff, some stuff up on the whiteboard and then, yeah, I'll get back to you. So hopefully, We'll have it uh, deploying um, the other pipelines um, successfully pretty soon. A little update for myself. Um, managed to get it all done and deployed successfully. Um, basically, I just took a five minute break, um, grabbed some water. That's all you need really is just to spend some time away from the screen, come back with a fresh fresh mind, fresh eyes, and uh, then give it a crack. And that, that generally seems to do the trick. So I didn't have to jot anything down or draw anything up on that white one behind me. Um, yeah, it was pretty straightforward. Just uh, a few little mistakes that I made myself. Um, but yeah, we've got them sorted. So if you look at this now, what we have here is two different storage accounts. 
one's calf storage which is a blob storage uh, and calf az file test which is basically a storage account for files and uh, file shares and they both have their own private endpoints uh, so that yeah that was pretty good um, now plan is to delete these because they're just resources taking up space and incurring costs um, so I'm gonna get rid of these um, change the parameters that I had in the hard coded the calf storage and calf az files test so change them so whoever's deploying the pipelines can set their own names and um, that's it um, I'll raise a PR and um, send that over to the senior engineers and uh, hopefully all is good and yeah we can we can close this ticket off and then moves on to the boring part where I'm gonna have to start creating some documentation around what I've done. All right, so basically over the last few weeks, I've been working on pipelines. So I've been creating pipelines um, relating to the infrastructure that I've uh, templated up. So we've been using Bicep um, instead of ARM templates because it's so much easier and smoother. If, you, if anyone here has ever used ARM templates, you know how much a pain in the backside they are. So we've opted for Bicep on this project and it's pretty similar to Terraform. Um, we've created a bunch of modules and everything's pretty much reusable um, and it could be reused across multiple different projects. So we created it so it's not just uh, specific to one project, it's, it's all modulized. I've created pipelines for each resource that's getting deployed. So there's roughly about 10 pipelines so far. That could increase or decrease, but these are the main pipelines. A lot of these pipelines I've created relate to the base itself, the base infrastructure that needs to be deployed before you can start deploying your compute uh, resources. So if I show you this, we've got quite a few all working fine now, 100%. What I need to do is actually document this all up. Well, when it comes to handing it over to the actual client, they know what each pipeline does, um, the process behind it, how to deploy it, and if they ever need to make any changes, you know, maybe move to a to a later API version or previous API version for each one of the modules they can because it because it's set, it's parameterized, you know, and it's 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 pretty straightforward. Um, the whole plan was to make it as simple as possible and easy as possible for the client to understand. So far, it's been good pretty successful managed to get it all working but yeah i'll give you an update in a bit and um, i'll let you know how i get on there's one more task that's left for me which is going to be around monitoring itself so the monitoring is not something i've actually touched during the proof of concept phase we now we've now moved over to sort of more or less a production phase or at least creating dev test release and production environments um, that are actually going to be used so it's not just a proof of concept but these are actually going to be used by the client and um, so this is going to be my first go at trying to deploy i think it's elastic search is it um i think it's elastic search uh, but with the azure wrapper around it i uh, i'm not too sure on that don't quote me on that i'll have to confirm um but i'm well, the other engineers have worked on it, so it should be pretty straightforward if, if they've got some documentation for that already. But I'll let you know how I get on and then I'll update in a bit. Quick update. I've completed all my documentation. That's gone to another senior engineer to review and he'll let me know if there's any changes needed or if it makes sense or whatever. Um, but while I wait, I did investigate the Elastic ticket. 
can't do that currently because we're waiting for a service account to be created. Apparently you can't use your own user account for that um, because there's some sort of link. So we need a client side service account, which is still going through the approval process. So that means it's time for a late lunch. Got past five, 10 past five. Um, this is pretty normal to be honest for me to eat at this time. It gives me roughly an hour, an hour and a half before I head to the gym. But yeah, I'm just gonna have a half an hour break. Watch this guy eat 4,000 calories. Uh, I hope my late lunch. Now it's time for some dessert, high protein yogurt, whipped cream and a lotus biscuit to top it off. So it's the end of the day, um, I'm just chilling out, having some downtime, relaxing. Um, it's been a long day today, my brain's completely fried. Not much meetings, I had two meetings. Um, but the rest of the day just spent writing infrastructure as code, um, creating pipelines and whatnot. You've seen it in the video. But yeah, I, I worked a few hours extra today and it's just it's part of the job. Some days you work more, some days you work less. Um, workflow varies, demand varies, but it all even out, evens out in the end. But yeah, it is, it is pretty flexible. So yeah, I'm just chilling. Got my blue light filters on, just watching some vlogs on YouTube. I should be on that spin bike, but it's not happening today. 
too tired today, too drained, and I've already been gym, so I'm good. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. I tried to give a different perspective of working from home where I showed you what I was working on rather than just having code in the background of my video and having time lapses continuously. I tried to get you a bit more involved so you can see what an actual day in the life looks like. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to see more, drop a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll definitely post more videos. I'm thinking about doing videos on how to get into tech or get yourself a job in IT, especially if you didn't come from a tech or IT background or have a degree in IT or computer science. So I came from a completely different background. I'm self-taught and I've managed to get myself a pretty decent job and work my way up. So I think that would be pretty insightful for me to do sort of a timeline of how I got into tech, my, my stages, my roles that I've been in, the jobs I've worked um, to get to the level I am. I'm currently a mid-level DevOps engineer. If you want to see that, thumbs up the video, comment, let me know. And I'll be sure to get that out shortly.